what is good ladies and gentlemen thank you guys for coming back to the channel now i know i haven't been posting as frequently as i would like but truth be told is because i don't have a creative direction now obviously there's so many videos i can make you know trivia and things like that but the problem is those all come with copyright potentials because i don't exactly know where i would find visually appealing trivias that i can answer on the spot and things like that but if i find i'll do it and then there's just other wrestling things that i don't even know what to talk about if i had some sort of guidelines i guess from what you guys want to see drop it in the comments we're going to be talking about the entire draft today all the picks the thoughts i want your thoughts in the comments down below too roll the intro cue the standing ovation what an amazing moment we are blessed now with that being said i literally just got done with an interview as well so wish me luck and let's go ahead and get straight into it also drop a like because it does help the channel grow tremendously so obviously this comes as courtesy from sean ross now i did actually watch the show myself I haven't actually been streaming as much as I would like recently either just due to other life things. Round one, it was a pretty mid-night one in my opinion. I mean, Carmelo Hayes was already showing up on SmackDown. He did have his first match, however, on Raw against Finn Balor. Uh, but everybody more or less stood on the same brand. You have Bianca on SmackDown being the number one pick, which was amazing. You have Jey Uso, main event. Obviously, he stays on Raw. Melo being officially drafted to SmackDown and, of course, former world heavyweight champion seth rollins being drafted to raw in this episode they also announced that roman reigns in character would be recusing himself from the draft which is going to be very interesting because what that means is when he returns he'll most likely come back and maybe he they'll continue to use him on both shows to boost the ratings that they have been doing or have done in the past and you know one would have to argue that he ha would probably make his own bloodline against solo's current bloodline and they maybe can culminate in war games at survivor series now that would be pretty interesting to me of course roman with the usos against solo uh tamatanga and maybe jacob fatu if they get him ready by then uh, because he is currently signed to wwe for those who didn't know now here is where we get two different people switching brands uh although braun breaker uh you know obviously was signed to smackdown he was then officially drafted to raw but keep in mind, Braun Breaker was officially a part of the SmackDown roster prior to this decision. And then, of course, we have Nia Jax being drafted to SmackDown. Liv and Randy Orton staying on their respective brands. The megastar LA Knight is staying on SmackDown. One could argue that because Logan Paul is also staying on SmackDown uh, due to the clause of the current champions not being eligible to switch brands, which means they stay on the, on the show. Uh, you would have to argue that maybe they are still going with the vision that we've all seen in the past. LA Knight versus Logan Paul down the line for the United States Championship could even pretty much be happening at SummerSlam. We have Ricochet staying on Raw, SmackDown keeping the bloodline, Sheamus of course also uh, you know being on Raw now even though he returned on there they officially drafted him to Raw. Now we also have the phenomenal AJ Styles staying on SmackDown. We have Alpha Academy staying on Raw. We have Andrade being drafted to SmackDown. Now this brought me great tears of pain. And the reason why is because on night two, they drafted the LWO to Raw, which means no Zelina Vega and Andrade reunion for now. Uh, and then of course, I would assume that WWE likes to keep their couples together. Not, I'm not assuming that part, I know that part, but what I'm saying is I'm assuming the next sentence. <laughs> Uh, Charlotte Flair will most likely return on SmackDown due to her and Andrade uh, being married. Unless if they're not married anymore. In which case, I, I don't keep up with it that much. I just know that recently, you know, like a, a year ago or something like that, I saw them with a picture and she was wearing her ring and saying that she loves her husband. I don't know if they're still together. Y'all let me know in the comments. Either way, they, you know, whatever. Kiana James, big, big pick for Raw. Big pickup. Uh, if you guys don't know who Kiana James is, she's a phenomenal talent she's really good in the ring she's got a great character she's got that like boss lady type of uh ceo aura she reminds me a lot of like a a younger stephanie mcmahon but with less of the sexual prowess that was utilized in the women's in the early 2000s and late 90s and more so just more more straight to the business type of scenario here with kiana james but you guys are gonna like her a lot for sure if you don't know who she is now one other notable thing to mention is that I will try to find the characters, not characters, I'm bugging, the people that were drafted outside of the actual draft because there were a few. So, for example, The Way, 
the way officially all of them were all drafted to SmackDown. Uh, Dijak is now going to be Monday Night Ratio on Raw. So if you guys uh, follow him on Twitter, you'll know what I'm talking about. Or X, whatever they call it now. So Dijak was officially drafted to Raw. Um, and then, of course, they have a couple of other picks, which I will try to find for you. But again, if I don't, just tell me in the comments. Imperium stays on Raw. Jade Cargill officially now on SmackDown. Actually, I think she signed a contract before, so technically she was already on SmackDown. So Jade stays on SmackDown is probably what I'm saying. Damage Control is officially being moved to Raw. Now, the reason why this brings me great joy, EO Sky has a lot of matches that she could have here. Obviously, against Becky being one of the, the one that I see the most. EO versus, you know, Rhea, Liv Morgan. I know, I think EO and Rhea actually ran it before. Uh, I believe they had a triple threat between EO and Rhea and Charlotte where EO winded up pinning Rhea to become NXT Women's Champion. That that sounds about right. Unless if my brain was making all that up. In which case it was a hell of a match that I came up with in my head. <laughs> but anyways, damage controls on Raw and that's a benefit because that means Bianca Belair is on SmackDown. And you know what that means. No more 47 year feud. No more repetitive matches between them. It's done. It. That's it. We're done with that. No more Bianca and damage control. We're done. However, Bailey is still on SmackDown. Uh, hmm. Trying to figure out words. Uh... We'll have to see how that goes. Kevin Owens is remaining on SmackDown as well. CM Punk being drafted to Raw. So he's going to be pretty much staying where he's been. The Pride staying on SmackDown. Braun Strowman returning here and being drafted to Monday Night Raw. And of course, it's going to be Tiffy time on SmackDown, so she's going to stay there. And here's where I was speaking of my tears of despair, as the LWO has been drafted to Raw, so no Zelina and Andrade reunion. And the LWO is going to implode probably soon anyway, due to what happened with Carlito being the one that attacked uh, Dragon Lee. But anyways, Legado de Fantasma is staying on SmackDown, which is great, so no more of that feud either. I think it ran a course. Uh, the good thing is, though, that Hooray... And Dom Dom are back on Raw. Uh, Drew McIntyre in a round three pick is a little weird to me. But I know that's probably just part of storyline for his character. Um, keep in mind, Drew does have a hyper extended elbow injury. And it's actually ironic that him and CM Punk's feud, despite them being both injured, is the number one uh, story going on, in my opinion, right now on the entire show. Uh, their story is even eclipsing the champions. And that's that's that just goes to show how great their characters have transcended just requiring fighting. They can just use verbality to convey their message and their story across the board and get a feeling from the fans. So fantastic stuff there by both men. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura being drafted to SmackDown. That's also pretty good stuff. New matches for him. I always felt like Nakamura did his best work on SmackDown anyway. Now here's the thing that I wanted to talk about here. Round four, you have the Judgment Day being drafted to Raw even though they were already there. So they're, they're staying on Raw, right? But the one that's missing there, uh, obviously Damian Priest is champion, so he stays, right? But Rhea Ripley is not in this photo. And the announcers made it very clear that when they spoke of the members of the Judgment Day who were drafted to Raw, they specifically stated the three names of the men you see in that photo, and they did not mention Mommy. So, will she return to Raw? Most likely, because the route that they're going is most likely Liv beating Becky Lynch uh, down the line maybe at the pay-per-view after uh backlash right or hell maybe even SummerSlam, and then obviously maybe live and Rhea will run it back or hopefully they run it back uh i'm one of those people that really wanted live to become champion and then have live sort of be like the heel character and and Rhea mommy be like the face in that story again and i think that that would be refreshing for the story as a whole because now you're flipping it on its head in in story or actually, it did actually happen, apparently, from how they explained it. But Liv uh, hurt Rhea on her exit departure from WWE. So it goes without saying that now that adds a new layer to their story and it continues it even further. But anyways, enough yapping. I can make a whole nother video about that. It would take too long. <laughs> Naomi on SmackDown is she's going to stay there. The Mad Dragon Dragonoff, as I stated earlier, has been drafted to Raw. He is on the same brand as Gunther. But I don't think they need to give us that match so soon. I think they should either have uh, Dragunov maybe do something with Imperium. I'm not saying he really needs to join because I think Dragunov can stand on his own two feet. But 
if they do maybe want to do something like that and then eventually break him off uh, and then down the line have him feud with Gunther maybe for another title that could be on the line there because I do believe Gunther will eventually be world champion and from my understanding they are going to position Dragunov the way that they did Gunther where they're going to have him putting on bangers and having him be protected as far as uh, losses and things like that. Chelsea Green and Piper Niven have been drafted to SmackDown so now Chelsea is going to annoy the hell out of Nick Aldis or Aldis and it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> Uh, this man, Adam Pierce, was elated to know that Chelsea is gone, which was great. New Day! They stay on Raw. Pretty Deadly stays on SmackDown. Lyra Valkyria getting the call up to Raw, which is fantastic. Great wrestler. Not the best on the mic, but it's okay. I think her entrance is also pretty cool if they keep it the same and they don't def rebel her like they did Stephanie McMahon. <sighs> I'm not even going to talk about that anymore. I'm not going to Okay, I don't know what dirt that man has on Triple H, but we need to do something. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, like I said, with Tommaso and Johnny Gargano are all going to be SmackDown bound. And the final pick here, the testament, the final testament on Raw, they are going to be drafted from SmackDown to Raw. DIY, as I said, is going to be drafted to SmackDown. Bronson Reed drafted to Raw. He was already there. Uh, Blair Davenport getting the call up as well, going to SmackDown. So again, some pretty good people coming to the brand to refresh it and things like that. I'm actually looking forward to what Blair does. I just hope that they don't, maybe they they don't put like, I don't know. They got to figure something out because they do have a lot of, uh, the, the company's in a place where for the first time they do have a good amount of talent all being recognized simultaneously. And it's, they do have a pretty good, uh, what's the word? I don't want to say rotation because that, that's not the right word, but they're, they're being positioned really well regardless of their spot on the show. But then there are times where sometimes some of the newer girls, like Tiffany, for example, will get neglected, right? They haven't been really showing Jade that much, but that's okay. I feel like they're doing that on purpose because she's more of like a special uh, commodity, like a special event type of thing, right? But I don't want Blair to get lost in that shuffle where they haven't even really gotten Tiffany to where they need her to be yet. And they, you know, last week, I think they played her old theme song. Then she came back with her new theme song. So I don't know if that was a mistake. It probably was. But now, I don't know, man. I just, I hope they don't mess up Tiffany and I hope that they do Blair justice because Blair is actually a pretty solid wrestler. Um, maybe not the best on the mic, but when she decides to cook, she does have her moments. And I hope Kiana James doesn't get lost in the shuffle. I hope that they position her correctly. Um, you know, Braun Breaker, they, his theme song is mid. They changed his theme song. His old theme song was fire. Like, I think, the, <clears throat> you know, him coming out with the, the who, 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 the wolves and all. And the alarm at the beginning of his theme song was also really cool. But now, the theme song they gave Braun sounds really generic, really mid. Uh, Baron Corbin was also drafted to SmackDown, in case you guys didn't know. I... It, 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 the only thing that Triple H needs to fix, man, and I'm going to be brutally honest, because I, I personally, I'm liking everything that he's been doing, is Def Rebel. They need to get rid of that man. Or, or, or them, or, or whatever. Because I don't know who they are, right? But that artist needs to go i would even settle for cfo at this point because cfo actually consistently had some pretty solid bangers and obviously if they bring back the goat uh the homie jim or was it john johnston something like that i mean that would be ggs for all the theme songs that would be everybody and their mother will have the best theme songs ever but i'm done rambling man this is why i can't do youtube videos i'll be on here for like 30 minutes talking about nothing <laughs> but maybe y'all like that i don't know comment down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe